Hey guys, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to be doing my November 2021 reading journal entries in my new reading journal. I know you guys really liked all the reading journal videos last year, so I'm back at it again in my new reading journal. This month, I finally finished book number seven of Harry Potter, meaning that I have concluded the whole series. So this video, I am basically going to be doing all of my Harry Potter reading journal entries. I did a massive two page spread for Harry Potter because there are so many books and I'm going to stamp out book one through seven and then write my little journal entry of what I thought about it underneath. This is the official spoiler alert. If you have not seen Harry Potter or don't want to know what happens yet, do not watch this video, come back and watch next week's. But if you are a Harry Potter fan and you just wanna geek out about it in the comments below, you can go ahead and do that. I will be responding to all of my comments and I hope to strike up a conversation with you guys. My journal entry for book one is a little bit short because I feel like this book, it's the beginning of this series, so it's pretty straightforward and there's no questions answered yet. So my journal entry for book one is, one of the cutest books and films ever. All of the children are so young and innocent and this book was an amazing foundation for the rest of the series. If you have seen Harry Potter, I'm curious to know what your favorite book and character is. Go ahead and comment that down below. I think it'll be really interesting to see what characters we all find that we liked and which book was our favorite. My journal entry for book two is an amazing sequel to book one, yet here these books feel more like one-offs and the overall series plot has not quite felt prevalent yet. We begin to see Voldy, or Voldemort as I say, but soon after this book, he disappears for a while, which is suspicious. Book three, which is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which some people have told me is their favorite book, so I definitely had high expectations for this, and I was not disappointed. Here's my journal entry. Voldy disappears in this book, which is odd and interesting how he still remains such a prevalent theme in the series despite his absence. Lupin, a very important character in the series, is introduced as the Defense Against the Dark Arts professor, but is quickly turned on by the squad due to him being a werewolf. We also uncover the Marauders map and discover tidbits about Harry's parents. This was an amazing book, and I can see why this is some people's favorite book. It could be a single. Book four, The Goblet of Fire. This is where I see the series take a turn to a much darker story. Cedric dies and Harry comes face to face with Voldy and escapes yet again. We learn that there are other wizarding schools and that there is a professional Quidditch league, which is cool. Book five, sadly, I think that this is my least favorite Harry Potter book of this series. Essentially, all that happens, in my opinion, is we learn that the Order of the Phoenix is a group assembled to protect Harry from Voldy, and that Neville could have been the chosen one. Also, I did find it interesting how Rowling introduced a villain other than Voldy so late in the series. Personally, I hate Umbridge more than Voldemort. Like this video if you agree. Book six was my longest journal entry, and I think I might have to crown it my favorite book. It's either book six or book three. Wow, does a lot happen in this book. Harry and Ron cheat in potions using the Half-Blood Prince's cheat codes until it goes too far and Harry really hurts Draco. The darkness in Draco is revealed throughout this book, and I started to feel really bad for him. He had no choice. Horcruxes and searching for parts of Voldy happen throughout this book, yet he is absent again. Voldemort's henchmen, the Death Eaters, do more of his work than he does, because he was too weak and pathetic. Dumbledore dies at Snape's hand, and a fury rises up in Harry more than ever before. Romance sparks between Hermione and Ron, and Harry and Ginny. So cute. But they all have their own stuff to deal with, so there is no room for romance. Book 6 had so many plot twists and really kept me engaged the whole time, so I do think I have to crown Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince as my favorite book of the series, but here is Book 7's journal entry. The end to the series! This, surprisingly, was also not my favorite book, but it was a good end to the adventure. The Battle of Hogwarts commences and Voldy dies in an all-too-normal way. The Elder Wand is randomly introduced, but is supposed to be really important? Dot dot dot. 
Although, Ron and Hermione end up together, and so do Harry and Jenny, so I'm happy. Lovely book series. In the end, I do understand why people like this book series so much. I do too. I feel like Rowling did a really good job of intertwining fantasy elements like magic and Hogwarts and things like that with some real-life struggles that teenagers face, like romance and figuring out their friendships and priorities and things like that. So on my five-star list, I decided to include Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, the third book. Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire because I thought all of the Quidditch stuff and Bobaton and Durmstrang and all of the other magical castles around the world was cool. And of course, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I also want to be clear that I did not read the whole seven book series of Harry Potter in November. I simply finished it in November. Therefore, I am finishing off the last book on the bookshelf here. I wanted to include every book in my November reading journal video so that I could have them all together in a inclusive Harry Potter spread. I thought it'd be a lot more simple for me to look back on and to keep in a video. So that is why I did them all in this video and I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Some books that I am currently reading are this really vintage book that I found in an old thrift shop actually. It is worn and torn and its pages are so yellowed with age. It was published in 1888 and it is an outline of the history of ancient Greece. I simply picked this up because I thought it'd be cool to educate myself and I think other parts of the world learning about their history is really cool as well. So that is why I'm reading this. <laughs> Next up, I am also reading The Harbinger number two. My family gifted this to me and it's really interesting, so I would definitely recommend these books. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope I gave you some ideas for books to read next. If you enjoyed it, feel free to leave a like down below and go ahead and comment what you're currently reading or what you're planning to read in the future. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.